Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute and simple ladybug birthday cake. Plus, I'm going to show you how to make this really fun pinata ladybug birthday cake too. For the first ladybug cake, I baked one medium round cake and one small round cake. I split both cakes in half and layered the first larger cake with my mocha buttercream icing that you can actually see how to make in this video here. Then I crumb coated that first cake and put the first layer of the small cake on top. Then I piped an icing fence around the edge of the smaller cake and put lemon curd inside there. The icing fence is so that the lemon curd doesn't seep out of the cake while I'm icing it. Then I put the top of the smaller cake on top. And as you can see, I used a metal bowl to bake the smaller cake in so that the top would be rounded like the round shell of the ladybug. And then I crumb coated all of that. A crumb coat helps to seal in the crumbs. After you crumb coat your cake, put it in the fridge so that the icing will harden and it makes it easier to ice. On the side of the bottom cake, I piped on a weaving technique with the buttercream icing. Around the bottom of the smaller cake, I weaved on a cord piping technique. Then I added one more piping cord around the edge of the top cake to finish that off before adding my ladybug features. I'll leave links in the description below to how you can do both of those piping techniques for your own ladybug cake. Then I took some red candy melts. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get red candy melts. It's a chocolate, white chocolate candy melt. And I actually coated the inside of that metal pan that I baked the cake in with the red candy melts and let that harden in the fridge and then removed it from the pan. You can actually see the pan that I used in the background. It's actually from a special round cake pan set. I'll leave a link in the description below for you for that as well. It's a great set to use to make round cakes for like balls, sports cakes, and astronomy cakes, and so on. So for this ladybug cake, I used that shell and I made it red on purpose to be the ladybug shell or the ladybug's back. Then I colored some of the buttercream black and started to pipe on the outline of the ladybug. First, I did a half a half moon shape and colored that in to fill the face and then I put a line down the middle to separate the ladybug wings and I put the ladybug dots on the wings as well. Next I piped on round white eyes with black pupils and two little dots for the nose and then a cute little smile. It's a really simple ladybug birthday cake to do. Then just to dress it up a little bit I created flowers from homemade marshmallow fondant, which you can actually see how to make in this video here. Plus, I'll leave you a link in the description below where you can download the recipe for my homemade marshmallow fondant. I had so much fun making these fondant flowers. I'll leave a link in the description below for you as well to the tools that I use to make these flowers. They make it so easy. You can absolutely make them by hand, but these simple fondant tools make it so easy to make these flowers. And then I finished off the cake by just putting little loops around the bottom with a little dot in each one to make the whole cake look like a flower that the ladybug was sitting on. I hope you really enjoyed that and I'm going to show you in just a moment how to make the ladybug pinata cake. But first let me just introduce myself. Hi, I'm Amanda Vandergulik from cleverdoughcakes.com where I bring you yummy recipes, baking recipes, and fun cake decorating ideas. If you enjoyed the last ladybug cake that I made, please give me a thumbs up so that I'll know. And if you didn't like it, Go ahead and give me a thumbs down because that's always good to know as well. All right, let's move on and I'll show you how to make the ladybug pinata birthday cake. Okay, so for this pinata ladybug birthday cake, I started by melting some more candy melts, chocolate, white chocolate candy melts and dark chocolate candy melts. I had pink, white and a dark chocolate brown. And see that little round Tupperware bowl? That's what I used to create the shell of the ladybug. So what I did is I melted the pink chocolate and the brown chocolate and the white chocolate and then 
I used a paintbrush and painted the inside of the bowl. So let me show you how we go along. So you can see that I first simply put the candy melts that I needed in little ceramic bowls and I sat that in some warm water in my sink and it helped to melt the bowls. You can also melt it on the stove by putting it on top of a pot of warm water, boiling water, but not boiling while you melt it. But this is a simple technique. Just put hot water in a sink and it will actually heat up the candy melts and melt it for you. If you look closely at this photo on the right sink, you'll see that I was also warming up some yummy salmon for dinner the same day. <laughs> it's handy to have two sinks. All right, so to begin with, I took the bowl and I painted the outlines of the ladybug features. So the half moon for the face with two little dots for the eyes and line down the center to separate the ladybird wings and then circles on each of the wings that define the ladybug. There, see? As you can see, the bowl was slightly transparent so you can actually see what the ladybug was going to look like when it was finished. Then before filling in the rest of the ladybug features, I put a nice pink smile on our ladybug. Isn't she cute? And some white candy melts that went over top of the brown pupils of the eyes. And then I had fun painting in the wings with the rest of the pink candy melts. See how easy this is? So you have to think when you're painting a bowl like this, you have to think the end result that you want needs to go on first and then you fill in the background features second. So this is what the finished painted bowl looked like from the inside. Kind of messy, but have a look. See how cute it is from the outside? See him just peeping out, looking out at that bowl. And then I added more of the dark chocolate candy melts on top of the face to really highlight the facial features and of course to complete the shell. Here, take a look at that. Look at her looking right through that bowl. Whee, she's upside down. Then I set her down on the table to harden for a little while before removing her from her, her bowl. Look how adorable she is. And this is what the shell looks like from the inside now that it's out of the bowl. All right, so now it's time to decorate our ladybug pinata birthday cake. Okay, so we started with a large round sponge cake. You can see how to make this vanilla sponge cake in this recipe here. And I covered it with, again, the mocha buttercream icing that you can see in this recipe over here. I gave it a nice thick coating and I didn't worry too much about smoothing it out because I wanted this ladybug pinata cake to have a rustic look to it, like she was out in the field. Then what I did is I took that bowl where I made her in and I pushed it down onto the buttercream icing to create a circle so that I knew exactly how big she was. And then I colored some of my buttercream icing green and piped a leaf around the form of the bowl. So you can see how the leaf curls around and then down the side of the cake. And then I made a higher ridge around where the bowl was going to sit. Then I sprinkled some green colored sugar sprinkles over the leaf to give it a little bit of pizzazz. It also gave the effect that the leaf was fresh in the morning dew. See how nice and shiny and fresh that looks? Then I took a mixture of jelly beans and Smarties or M&Ms and filled the center of the leaf. This was going to be the prize inside the pinata ladybug cake. I'm sure you'd love a surprise like that too inside of your cake, right? If so, give me a like, let me know. And then it was time to top the ladybug on her cake. And I simply took the ladybug and placed her right over that fence. So the fence that I created with the green piping was to hold the candies in place. Take a look at her, isn't she just adorable? Now I wanted to create something to blow out a candle. So I decided to make a little cupcake. When I was making the cake, I made sure to put a little bit extra in a single cupcake. Take a look at this and placed it on her back. So it's like the ladybug is giving a cupcake as a present. This cake was for my niece's fifth birthday and she absolutely loved it. So we got a little five on top there. 
She just enjoyed it so much. Then to personalize the ladybug cake, I wrote happy birthday, Alicia, and I put some yummy marshmallows, mini marshmallows around the edge of the bottom of the cake to finish it off. Who doesn't like marshmallows? Well, okay, it's except for my wife, but that's okay. <laughs> so after we sang happy birthday and she blew out the candle, she had the choice to smash open the pinata cake or to simply lift the ladybug off of her cake and find the treasure underneath. She wanted to lift the ladybug off the cake so that she'd still have the ladybug to enjoy for a little while, but she couldn't wait to see the yummy treats. Leave me a comment below and let me know what kind of treats would you put inside of your own ladybug cake for a simple birthday party during quarantine. And let me know which ladybug cake you enjoyed more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. And next, head on over here and I'll show you how I made this pinata cake and you get to see it smashed. Plus, head on over here if you want to see how to make the buttercream icing. Thank you for watching my ladybug cake tutorial. I'll see you over here.